little chesticle. You ready? Let's do it. So tonight's really about ideas having sex with each other. <laughs> Our minds are here to meet, exchange ideas, and inspire one another. They say that chance favors the connected mind. Well, that's true. But chance also favors the prepared mind. Now, when you look at history, you see that many brilliant and innovative ideas resulted from creative networks sharing, collaborating, and challenging each other. Now, my passion is finding out how you feed your brain, but also how we connect and start these networks. You see, a few months ago, I was spiritually empty. There's a certain formula for mediocrity. You stop asking questions, you stop developing skills, you stop stretching and exercising your mind and discovering your voice. I wasn't living significantly, I was, I was just existing in the urgent. But I really do believe that the universe helps you when you try to help yourself. So I started asking questions and developing skills. I did things to stretch my mind and exercise it and discover my voice. I stopped sacrificing long-term gain for the sake of short-term satisfaction, like screwing around on the internet and watching TV, Netflix binging, but like a crazy ex-wife, these things found their way back into my life. <laughs> you see, without mutually stimulating interactions, people and neurons wither and die. We wouldn't go days without eating food, so why the hell do we go days without feeding our mind? We say we waste time and we complain about it. We really waste ourselves. Now, at my CrossFit gym, I have a network of people sharing and collaborating and challenging each other. And these people form a network of connections that help sustain my growth and make sure I don't do it alone. Because let's face it, the journey alone sucks. It's always better when somebody's around with you. Neuroscience data has shown that when we try and learn and innovate together, we can actually enhance our brains. But it has to be frequent, intense, and adaptive. And it's more than just about your work life. All areas of life affect each other. So lack of engagement in one is going to infect the rest. Like a venereal disease, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we do as individuals outside of intellectual gatherings like Bishakasha is really the bridge between how we grow individually and collectively. So I want to share with you some tips on how you build these bridges and so we can start together an intellectual revolution. No bike needed. So in a vineyard, a vine keeper constantly prunes and cuts unproductive branches so the nutrients go to the older grapes. Weekly, we have to cut and prune things that are unproductive out of our life. This way we have energy to engage with things that actually help us grow. Every day, try and start it by learning new things and thinking new thoughts. I try and do this every morning when I get up, get dressed, and drive to work by listening to a TED talk or perhaps even an audiobook. Maybe not do it every day, but try doing it every Monday, because, you know, Monday sucks, so you have something to look forward to. Now, you guys can laugh, it's okay. Now try and le read a new book every month, but make a commitment to a person that one month later you will share what you learned. Thomas Jefferson didn't just read books, he, he had conversations with them by writing his thoughts and comments along the pages, like, come on, Harry, sack up. Now, so as we learn, we got to learn to take notes, right? The questions we ask in the future might be answered by the solutions we find today. So buy a nice journal. I use an app like Evernote. When things aren't in our mind, they can be saved. So thank you, Nintendo, for your wisdom. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So set a head-to-head. -head. This is a meeting between two people who are designed to share ideas, stimulate new thoughts, and provoke discussion. I wonder what ideas came out of this meetup. Get a mentor and take them to lunch once a month. At lunch, bring three of your biggest problems. Discuss it and make three promises. One month later, ask them, have them ask you about those three promises, which you'll deliver, and then you'll th have three new problems to discuss as well. Start a learning circle. Make it a colorful group and make everybody different. In invite people who are going to inspire you by their vision, by their thinking, and, 
every person has to answer three questions. What are you inspired by? What are you working on? And what projects do you need following up on? We fail alone doing this because yesterday we always say tomorrow. Now with all these meetings, we have to have a plan because you want people to come and engage and then leave excited. So set a date, be committed, and use your notes to come up with a subject and put some effort into it. The goal is to share value with everybody. That way, let's be honest, I screwed that one up, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, the last thing is that once a month, guys, take a friend and attend an intellectual gathering like this, or Orlando Tech, or Nerd Night, and take a new person every time. This is the best way where we can put our brains in environments to essentially start these networks and form new thoughts. It, it doesn't have to be a leap. Bravery should be a series of changes to get you to where you want to go. And I tried to do this alone and I failed, but I realize now that true bravery is when you build these bridges with other people and change together. A year ago, I moved to Orlando and I was spiritually empty. And I came to Peshawkashaw Night and I was inspired. I was, I was inspired to go to Nerd Night, I went to Orlando Tech, and this inspired me so much that I bought a house here because I want to be part of the intellectual movement that's happening because it's special and I want to invite you guys to do that as well. Our best work is really ahead of us. Nobody here is going to lie on their deathbed thinking they wish they had more time to answer an email. But there are many great people who express regret for not having treated life with more purpose. So we have to ask each other and ask ourselves every day, what are you doing with what you've been given? Thank you, guys.